the truth about Paul Bunyan, more than just a tall tale. Paul Bunyan. Yes, the guy with the giant blue ox and an appetite for pancakes the size of backyard trampolines. You've probably heard of him, but if you think he's only a tale for kids, you might want to stick around. There's a reason Paul Bunyan is so much more than a bedtime story. Trust me, the truth behind this legend, it's much bigger than you'd expect, literally. Some have proposed that behind the legend lies a deeper commentary on American history, environmental change, and even human nature. Seems like somebody's been overthinking things a bit. So check this out. The Origins of Two Giants So, where did Paul Bunyan even come from? Was he conjured from thin air by some bored lumberjacks, creating their own entertainment during a long winter? Well, kind of. They had to have something to do. It wasn't like they had television and could binge-watch past episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger to pass the time. And like many great folk legends, Paul's roots aren't in one place, but rather they grow out of a combination of stories, cultures, and imaginations. Historians trace Bunyan's origins back to the early 19th century French-Canadian loggers, where our larger-than-life lumberjack hero could help them cope with the backbreaking work and the isolation of the wilderness. What better way to pass the time with a bunch of smelly lumberjacks than making up stories about a flannel-clad giant? But Paul Bunyan wasn't always portrayed as the friendly giant we know today. Sometimes early stories made him out to be, well, kind of a menace. A man so big that when he walked, he left footprints that created the Great Lakes, which is truly impressive, but also destructive. Was Paul Bunyan's larger-than-life nature as much about the fear of the untamed wilderness as it was about celebrating human strength? And then, of course, there's Babe, the blue ox who was so large he needed an entire forest just to raise. Babe wasn't always part of the Paul Bunyan story. He was a later addition. And in most versions of the tale, he's described as having become blue because he spent a little too much time outside during a very harsh and cold winter. But let's not get too distracted by Babe's pigment. Some see the character of Babe as a stand-in for an adorable puppy. Some think he was linked to Bunyan as a partner in reshaping the American wilderness. Together, they dug out rivers and flattened mountains, and, and they could clear forests faster than a zero-turn riding lawnmower could trim a putting green on a putt-putt golf course. Babe was just as mythical as Paul. And to some, who dive even deeper into the story, this big blue behemoth essentially represents humanity's relationship with nature. But I'm not so sure about all that. Myth-making, marketing. Now, here's the twist no one told you in elementary school. Paul Bunyan wasn't just some happy-go-lucky logger who loved chopping trees and befriending large domestic livestock. Oh no, my friends. Paul Bunyan was a brand. That's right. The legend we know today was commercialized in the early 20th century thanks to a clever marketing campaign by the Red River Lumber Company. They took this rough-around-the-edges folk hero and polished him up to be the family-friendly pancake-eating giant we all know and love, to sell lumber and wood fuel to keep a home warm. The thing about it, at the time, America was growing, and the lumber industry had to grow too. It was an imaginative way to sell the story of progress, of man versus nature, a giant who could take down trees faster than any machine. Seems that Paul Bunyan became a symbol of industrialization and of the popular concept of manifest destiny as America persistently pushed westward. This tall tale wasn't just for innocent fun, it was propaganda. And that giant blue ox? Think of him as a logo. A brand like the Nike swoosh of American folklore. Hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on there for just one gosh darn minute. 
I've been told by a reliable source that uh, it's not pronounced Nike. It's pronounced Nike, the Nike swoosh. A tall or cautionary tale. As we continue to overanalyze the legend of the big guy and his ox, there is still more to consider. Paul Bunyan's story might not just be about cutting down trees and battling the elements. Man versus nature in an epic battle to survive and progress. There are those who see additional, darker things. The legend of Paul Bunyan emerged during a time when Americans were rapidly transforming the landscape, harvesting timber, building railroads, and expanding cities at a breakneck pace. The vast, untamed wilderness was being tamed, domesticated, civilized, and made safe. Paul Bunyan and his big blue ox, Babe, were making a powerful impact that tamed rivers, opened up new lands, and connected communities. But these changes could instead be seen as scars on the land. Well, that's gloomy. By the 20th century, when tall tales around the fire were more popular, America was already beginning to recognize the downside to rapid industrialization. To some, the story of Paul Bunyan really isn't just a fun fable for children. Too bad for them. More contemporary and sophisticated observations made from the ivory towers of our time cast the legends of Paul Bunyan without their virtue. Instead, they are a warning and a cautionary tale, a parable of the clash between unbridled human ambition and arrogance and the natural world, where progress comes at the cost of the environment. Yeah, it's kind of dark. Leave it to folks who ruminate too much to ruin the fun. Why Paul Bunyan still matters. So, what's the takeaway here? Why would we care about a fictional giant who swings an axe and keeps an oversized bovine as a pet? Some might say, like all good examples of legend and lore, Paul Bunyan's story evolves with the times, for better or for worse. Our flannel-clad hero starts out as an entertaining and imaginative bit of fun, and then becomes a symbol of human strength in the face of nature's challenges. Over time, he became a symbol of industrialization and economic expansion. And now, well, some opt to steal all the joy and portray him as a cautionary tale about the balance between progress and preservation. So yeah, the legend of Paul Bunyan isn't just about a guy with a big axe. It's a story about us, a story that progresses in tandem with how we view ourselves impacting the world around us and how we have shaped that world. So the next time someone tells you Paul Bunyan is just for kids, you'll know better. There can be more to the legend than meets the eye. Or, you know, the size 80 boot print. Somewhere in this examination of the legend of Paul Bunyan is at least an ounce or two or more of wisdom. But for now, let's focus on just this one. There are legends and tall tales all over the world. Stories have always been a part of human life. Some are total fantasy. Some are true. Or at least mostly true. Some have a lesson, and some are pointless entertainment. Paul Bunyan and his blue ox, who really knows why it began, or if there has ever been a point to it? After all, it's a tall tale, right? But we humans have a way of finding patterns, meaning, symbolism, and depth. In the world around us, we see the reflection of ourselves. So, here's the ounce. Sometimes in the stories we tell ourselves, deep and meaningful insight is intended. Sometimes it's not, and we find it there anyway. Regardless of the intent, does it really matter? Because it's good if we are inspired and reminded to be better. And that's it, an ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, thanks for watching and examining, <laughs> okay, over-examining this story of Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox with us. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everybody in the world, because we'd like to grow 
and we can do that with your help. If you'll like, share, and subscribe, and we'd really appreciate it. So thanks. Thank you.